my treat today to get to have a conversation with George Schrader. Uh, Mr. Schrader was actually born on a farm near Olivet, Kansas. Uh, his family moved to Topeka when he was a child where he completed his schooling. He attended Baker University, graduating in 1953 with a degree in political science and economics. He then earned a master's in public administration from the University of Kansas. Uh, the latter involved an internship, which he did at San Angelo, Texas, uh, then worked for <laughs> two, working there for two more years. In 1957, he became the first city manager of Ennis, Texas, where he stayed for two years, and then he was hired as city manager of Mesquite. Uh, in 1964, while he was working in Mesquite, legendary Dallas mayor Eric Johnson invited him to attend a planning session at Salado for the project that became Goals for Dallas. In 1966, he became assistant city manager for Dallas, uh, where he worked very closely with Mayor Johnson, especially on the DFW airport project. Uh, in 1972, he became city manager, uh, overseeing the construction of the new city hall, uh, which had been on May one of Mayor Johnson's dreams. Uh, he was also instrumental in planning uh, the construction for this building, the Central Library, which of course is named for Mayor Johnson. Uh, he continued as city manager under Mayors Robert Folsom and Jack Evans, serving as a key player in the formation of the Arts District. Uh, his contributions to Dallas are so extensive that we really could devote several hours to discussing them, but because our theme of this year for the History Conference is transportation, um, I thought we would focus on some transportation-related topics that he was involved in, uh, and hope maybe we'll have a little time for some questions at the end. So, Mr. Schrader, uh, you told me that one of your first challenges uh, when you came to work in Dallas was that the city needed to ex extend Young Street past Houston, where it, at that time, dead end, so that it would connect to uh, Stemmons. Uh, do you want to tell us about that, that kind of that story and what you... Sure. <clears throat> That's uh, how, how all this is. His uh, background is all of that. I'm not any smarter, and I'm <clears throat> I'm, not, I'm not any better prepared. I just lived longer than most of you out there. <clears throat> <clears throat> but but Young Street needed to be uh, punched on through to I-35 to, cl to complete uh, the internal circulation of Elm, Main, Commerce, and Young Street. Now, it didn't go on to I-35 because the formidable, formidable, uh, the, the formidable position of Union Station was right there in front of it. And, and then, you know, as I've listened to some of the conversation today, you know, the city is an organism that's always evolving. And so it's like doing some of the hunting I did. You aim at where, what's there now, and it's gone when you get there. So <laughs> at that, when I got here, we needed to punch it on through. But then the railroads, which had been an important factor in, in Dallas, uh, <laughs> began to wane. The, they, the railroads discontinued passenger service. They, they sh shrunk, altered their freight service. They moved their headquarters from from Dallas, most of them. Now, and that not only took uh, uh, an important economic asset from the city, but but the, the the railroad was a very important community influence and civic service servant. When we ran out of water, they appointed a blue ribbon committee to develop a plan for uh, fixing the city's water shortage. And they, picked, and they selected August Vollmer to do that, and he was head of the railroad here. Well, all that, <coughs> all that went away, and when that happened, uh, the uh, Union Station became surplus. Well, those of us that had the responsibility of getting through there uh, with, with uh, Young uh, were excited about the prospect. We, we heard that the railroad had, had put the, was going to put it on the market. We went to the railroad and said, we've got to have it for right away for, for, for Young Street, and we'd like to buy it. And so we did. We bought it for $5 million. Now, the, the building had been starved for uh, renovation, been starved for maintenance. It was a real shambles. And so I signed the, so I signed the, the project to, uh, to uh, the Building Services Department to go in and haul off the trash and clean it up generally. 
and uh, did, and they did that. But when they got in there, got a, they got all excited about preserving the building. So, <laughs> so every few minutes they'd come in and say, "Miss Schrader, we'd like to put the put the wall lights back on. We think we found them all. Can't we do it? We can do it in our budget and on our time, and we'll do it." And then I I just get that settled, and then they'd come in with something else. So here it was on the one hand, we were preserving it, and on the other hand, we didn't see how we could get yet young through there without going through it, uh, severing it, demolishing it, whatever. Well, uh, we were still con considering that when Dallas owned the transit system, it was a separate department, separate, much like the park board. Uh, E.O. Uh, Cartwright was chairman of the special board, and uh, Wilson Driggs was the general manager, and a very able one. About that time, the fuel shortage uh, was threatened. The, the OPEC countries were going to shrink the production and, and put us in a crisis, and they did. So <laughs> Wilson was looking for a way to keep the buses going. And uh, I, we actually went out and bought a, fi bought a, f uh, a field of uh, storage, 400,000 gallons. And uh, Wilson showed up at my office and said, there's a fellow down here, Ray Hunt, who's bought the bought the property uh, on the west side of the the back side of 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 the Union Station, and and he's offered it to us for sale, and would you approve it? Well, the Bob Wilson had to get my approval of, on all of his spending and budget, and I said no, sir, I wouldn't. On the spot, I said that, <clears throat> and I've forgotten what my reasons were, <laughs> but he did. He left, and pretty soon he came back, and, and he said, well, we've talked to Ray Hunt again. Uh, he thinks we want to have it as a park and ride in this oil crisis, and uh, he'll lease it to us now. Would you approve it if we leased it? And I said, no, I wouldn't. And he said, okay, and then he left. Now, uh, this is one point where Ray and I differ. Most of the other stuff I've talked to you about. <laughs> I think... Ray thinks he's the one that came up with this idea. I know I was the one who came up with the idea. And so I'm making this presentation and Ray has to make his own. So I'm telling you that this was my idea. We, the property we owned was the, was, the transit, uh, was the transit station and the loading behind it and then a whole bunch of railroad right of way in strips at the back. We couldn't even grow green beans on it, much less develop it for anything. And he he was similarly situated with with his uh, with his development. And I said, Ray, what would you think about doing something that nobody's ever tried that I know of anywhere? Let's you and I uh, put together a uh, combine the two tracks, rub out all the ownership lines, and let's develop a let's make a development plan for for that area. And he said he would be willing to do that. He didn't know what else I was going to ask him to do, but, but he said uh, he would be willing to consider that. And I said, what I'd like to do is, is let's get a survey and rub out the lines, and then let's get a planner to, do the, to, to develop the planning. And he said, okay, uh, uh, go on. And I said, uh, and I'm going to pick the planner. And he said, really? Who do you have in mind? And I said, Vincent Potty and Warren Travers. I had met Vincent Potty and Warren Travers uh, when IMP used them in planning the parking and, and, and the access around the new city hall. And, and, and I knew something that you probably don't know. IMP and Vincent Potty and Warren Travers worked for years for Bill Zeckendorf. Now, you who are old enough will know that Bill Zeckendorf was the largest successful uh, de developer on, in Canada and eastern the, this country. They'd worked together there and they didn't build, they didn't develop a plan to create a book. They developed a plan to, to, to they developed a plan that Bill Zeckendorf would put buildings on and make money. And that's what we wanted to do downtown. And uh, so Ray agreed to do that and I said, we don't have any money in our budget to pay him, so you'll have to pay him. And he said, <laughs> and he said okay. <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna give my list of what I want out of, the, out of this property. 
to them, and you give your list, and we'll just turn it over to them. Now, uh, Dan, Dan Petty in, in, in our office, assistant manager, uh, was the guy who had to do the, 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 the dirt work, and, and John Scoville had to do it for Ray Hunt. And, and uh, I said, uh, uh, I, one, I got to have you, I got it right away for, uh, for, for, for Young Street to get it through. That's number one. Number two, I, I need a, a site for an indoor sports arena if we ever build one. Uh, the only thing we have left is basketball and hockey and tennis and so on. Uh, the the best ba f baseball teams in Arlington, the football teams gone to gone to Ar Ar gone to Irving. So I, I want a want a site for that, and uh, I want to uh, I, I want to uh, I want I want to build if we can preserve any part of the building. I'd like to I'd like to do that. And if we do, I want a master lease of the building. We city folks are not very good uh, real estate people. We don't, we don't, we're not real estate people at all. We don't want to be in the real estate business. So we want a master lease, and then the subleases are made by the master lease. And he said that was all right. And, and I said one other thing, Ray. You know, Hunt, the name Hunt, and the, and the, and the city, the city of Dallas, when they're together, like you and I are, that's tender for controversy, and I want you to promise me that you won't give up, regardless of the controversy, until the decision's made. We're going to carry it all the way through. If we get it approved, fine. If we don't, we won't. <clears throat> so he agreed to do that. He said, no, I want something, and that is that this property was proposed to be developed. Uh, uh, he said, I want to make it development. And I also told him I wanted to park and ride down, down there. But uh, I, I, he, I said, let's see, where was I? I, uh, I, I he said, I, I want us to do it pri uh, uh, confidentially. That's pretty tough for, for a city official to live with because he said this, there was a plan for the development of this. And... Uh, and it was uh, it was a, as a developer it had this gigantic uh, rendering of all the good things that were going to happen, and he had it financed until the went end as a, to the swoon, and uh, he lost the property. And he said that property can't stand another failure, and so uh, I want to do it privately. And so I assigned. Uh, I, I thought, well, you know, those are the ingredients for me making a, a deal with Ray. Uh, 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 a, a good, good old boyfriend and profiting from it. And I said, well, number one, and we did a lot of work at, at Denny's uh, at breakfast, and I said, we're going to have separate checks. <laughs> you, buy, you pay yours and I pay, I pay mine. And, uh, and uh, I said, we're, we're not going to do anything together uh, socially uh, uh, until this is all, all over with. And he he agreed to that, so we agreed to do it confidentially. We took it to uh, we well, Potty and Travers uh, developed their plan, and they said, you know, we think it'd be a shame for you to tear the Union Station down, and why don't you think of splitting Young and taking the westbound lanes on the south side of the building and the eastbound lanes on the north side of the building. Now, you know, why couldn't I have thought that, you know? <laughs> Pretty simple, but we, we, we bought it. Uh, and then uh, we continued to, to work out the plan. Ray said also, we want, to, we, we want if we're going to get into this, why, I said, well, you've got to run the utilities. We don't have any money, so bring all the utilities, big ones. And you've got to build the streets, and you've got to build the old underpasses. And, 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 you know, we've been criticized for letting Ray out easy. But, but that was a swampland back there. I don't know whether any of you knew, knew that or remembered it. <coughs> the, there, there were ties and old rails and puddles of oil and tanks and, and mesquite trees growing back there. And so he, he uh, uh, we, then, next we had to get it to the city council and get the council to approve it. We scheduled, uh, I said, oh, and one more thing, Ray, you got to make an immediate $15 million or greater investment in development. And so uh, he 
he went to uh, the Pritzker family and, and got a, a deal made for a Hyatt Hotel. And uh, the Pritzkers owned the hotel and, uh, and, and, and we, he, had a, he had a memorandum of understanding with Pritzkers. And then he, he said, uh, 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 we, we scheduled it to go to the council and he said, you know, I think uh, to be safe, I better get a contract with, with Pritzker. And so he took another couple of weeks and did that, scheduled the city, city of Dallas. And, uh, they, and uh, we were all set to have this grand uh, uh, thing that nobody could criticize and everybody be tickled pink uh, uh, in a conference room there, subdued lighting and all that. And I got a call that the inter uh, executive director of the international, international city manager was here with his assistant to see me and I said, well, we got to counsel me. Why don't you just come to that? And I thought, boy, this is a chance to show them off what it's like in Dallas. And uh, so we made the presentation and it was a sort of subdued re reaction by the members of the council. And about the time we were getting to the end of the presentation, George Allen said, Mr. Mayor, I want you to call an executive session. I want to have, have a meeting with the city manager. And, <laughs> And it's the nearest I ever came to getting fired over that deal <laughs> because uh, he, he spent uh, that time saying that I should have brought them along in spite of the fact that Ray wouldn't do it. Uh, we, should have, we should have acquainted them with the, all, all along the steps and uh, we should have done that and we should, I should be severely censored. And uh, he happened to work, he happened to have lunch about every week at the Stetson Club with uh, with uh, uh, the cowboy owner, uh, Merkison. Yeah, uh, huh? Merkison. Yeah, Merkison. Clint with Clint Merkison, and and and, and so uh, th th there then began a, a huge eruption of uh, activity, including uh, a meeting in John Stammen's office uh, to decide what they were going to do about me, and everybody was there. Stemmons and, 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 and Jimmy Aston and Al Davies and Dave Fox and Ray Nasher, they were all there. And uh, one of the members of the council was in the group and he was there and he told me that uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of uh, angst over it, uh, but they agreed not to do anything. And uh, so uh, they came out with no position and it went on the council agenda. It had gone to the council and I'd made my pitch and had no idea of the outcome. Charles Story, who was one of the, the great council people of my time, Charles Story, a lawyer, uh, uh, was, uh, was, was a great councilman for Dallas. And Charlie called me on Sunday afternoon and said, George, I, I, you've been trying to get my arms around your recommendation so I can be for it, but I can't do it. And, uh, and he said, uh, I'm calling you this afternoon. I want you to give me your pitch one more time before it goes on the agenda. I want to try to vote for it. And I thought, you know, if I'm ever a councilman or a member of a board, I'm going to remember that line. That's, that's the really fine way to deal with it. So I did. We, 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 we had the meeting. Uh, the plan was approved, which meant we had, uh, we had the young street put, put through. <coughs> And Charlie, I think, was the only one who voted against it. Uh. <laughs> now, Bob Folsom always told me, you're the worst salesman in the world. And so, uh, Charlie, that, ch that proved it. Now, I, I ought to quit it there. No, go ahead. This is fascinating. Uh, this reunion, re the, the reunion project was a public-private pro project. And, uh, and it was the only one that we know of in the country. And it created a, a huge storm of controversy, and 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 uh, and so uh, uh, we 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 survived uh, all of that. But I was San Jacinto Day was a uh, city holiday, and I did what I never do. I stayed home and uh, was sitting in my den in khakis and knit shirt. And the doorbell rang, and I went to the door, and there were two men, and they said, "We're from the IRS. We'd like, could we talk to you? Can we come in?" I said, "Come right on in." <laughs> and uh, 
And, 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 and so they said, we're not from the audit section. And they flipped their badges out and said, we're, the, we're from the criminal investigation session. <laughs> and and, and we're, uh, we're, our assignment is to make a, do a criminal investigation of you. And we, and we want all your financial records. So I began to assemble them. And I got a call from Felix McKnight at the Times Herald, the publisher. I knew Felix professionally very well, went to our church. Felix said, uh, please come over to, uh, to see me, would you, when you get a minute? I want to talk to you about something. Uh, and I thought, mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I got there, he said, we understand that you're uh, being uh, uh, ex examined, you're undergoing a criminal investigation uh, uh, for this. And I said, yes, sir, that's true. Uh, but there's, there's not a sh shred of evidence for anything. I haven't done anything wrong. And, and he said, I said, he said, well, we're trying to decide what to do about publishing it. And, and he said, uh, we can't decide. And I said, well, let me tell you more about it. You run the newspaper and you do it better than I do. You got to make your decision. But let me tell you what's in, in it for me. If you do that, uh, I, I can't, if it, if it becomes a public, if there's public awareness, I can't be effective as the city manager of Dallas. And I can't leave that cloud hanging over the city. And I really need to think about resigning. And he said, well, you know, uh, I believe you. And so we're not going to do anything. We're not going to publish it. And, and uh, we'll wait until the outcome, and we'll do our publishing at that, that point in time. Fits just as well. Hung up, went back, called from Joe Dealey. Went through the same story <laughs> on the telephone. And uh, he said, well, we're not going to, we won't publish anything. And then I learned that uh, that uh, that uh, a com the complaint had been met, filed with uh, Henry Wade. Now, I knew Henry Wade, and I knew him well enough not to ever talk to him about this. He'd had a press conference and <laughs> said I was down there trying to change my mind. Uh, it was some couple of years later that I was at the Mesquite Rodeo and ran into Henry, and he said, you know, I investigated that, and there's nothing there. I didn't think there was to start with. Now... <laughs> Somebody not only wanted to have the in, me criminally investigated, but they wanted to make sure the media knew about it, and they went around and, and told him. Uh, I asked the, the, the IRS if they'd tell me what it was they said and when they did, and they said no, until it was all over with. And they, they wrote me a check for between two and $3,000 for underpaid, for overpaying my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's, there's one other thing about that that's very personal to me. Uh, I, Eric, Eric Johnson was a very close friend of mine for, from the day I went to, before I went to work. And we had lunch together on Saturdays 25 years after he left the, the mayor's job. And I thought, I just can't afford uh, to, for him to find this out. I need to go over and tell him. And so I walked over to uh, Mr. Johnson's office and said, I want you to know about it. It's a criminal investigation. Uh, nobody's going to be embarrassed by it. Uh, I'm sorry it's, it's, it's going on. And he said, who's your lawyer? I said, I don't have a lawyer. I, he said, I said, I've been getting the stuff together. I don't have anything wrong. He said, you need a lawyer. And I said, well, I don't even know anybody, to, no lawyer to, to, to engage. And he said, well, you got one now. Now they call Saul Goodell over at Thompson Knight. And so he, he said, I've got him on a I got him on a retainer, and I'll just tell him to, to be your lawyer on this deal. And he did. And, and Saul Goodell said, well, I want Wally Bullard to help, but he's, he's the tax guy at, in our office. Turns out he was Lyndon Johnson's tax guy, too. <laughs> so I just brought my box of stuff, and they took it from there. And at the, at the, end, of the, uh, at the end of the investigation, they wanted to know if I knew who I'd want to do this and why? And I said, no, I don't have any idea. I sure did know. And I, he said, well, here's what we heard. We heard you had a note at the Mesquite First National Bank in the amount of $30,000, and you couldn't pay it, and they were demanding that you pay it. And Ray Hunt gave you the money. He assumed the, te he assumed the, the loan from the Teamsters Union, and in that loan was a $50,000 allocation for cleaning up the site. And they hadn't cleaned up the site. And so uh, he gave that 50000 to you to pay, to pay your note at the bank. 
said, well, that's interesting because I still owe the note at the bank. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I said, uh, and, and, and I don't know about Ray I, I, uh, and that $50,000. He said, could we go talk to Ray? I said, I'm sure he'll talk to you. And I helped him get together. And, uh, and it, Ray said, I've never used it. It's still there. I've forgotten it was there. Now, it takes courage and pain to do the great things. That I think that was a great one because it established the precedent, acceptable precedent for public-private work. And it became the, 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 the precedent for, for Bryan Place, the residential development that some of you may even live in, and, and the, all of the arts district doing things on a public-private uh, 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 public uh, venture. And uh, you got a lot of story there that nobody's ever heard before. <laughs> I, I'm, That's great. I, wait, wait. I, 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 I want to be sure you know this. John and, and, and John, John's, uh, 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 Ray and John and I were, uh, I was just about 30, a little over, and they were under 30, and we were, we were looking at a picture of all of us. And we, and we said, you, you know, we look like a bunch of college kids. <laughs> and I'll give Ray this credit. He said, well, you know, it's a good thing we were that young. We'd have had more sense than to try to do it if we'd been, <laughs> we'd been any older. That's great. Thank you. Well, you just mentioned um, the Arts District. Yes. And um, there is now a uh, road to the north of it called Woodrow Rogers with the deck park, et cetera. But you have a story to tell about original design to connect Central and I-35. That's you? correct. Yeah. Why don't you? Uh, I, one of the things that's a realism is that if you're, if, you, if you're the new guy in the manager's office, everybody who'd been in and asked for something and been turned down comes up to see you. And I got my share of those. One of them wasn't Lloyd Braff, who was the executive director of the Central Dallas Central Business District Association. And Lloyd said, we have two things we want. To, we want. We, we want Pearl Street fixed up, widened and fixed. Now, can you mind, can you, can you imagine downtown now without Pearl Street? And I said, well, we'll work on that. And they said, we knew, need to do Woodall Rogers Freeway, and that's a city Dallas uh, uh, state project. State, I think it's State at Highway 366. And, and I, I said, well, when I was in Mesquite as manager, uh, Luther Dewberry, was the was the was the regional engineer for the highway department? He and I were their office in Mesquite. I, I got acquainted with him. I'll go down and talk to him. Called Luther. Said Luther D. Berry, I want to come talk with you and talk to you about Woodall Rogers. And uh, and he said, uh, come on down. So I went down and he said, this has been an authorized project for 25 years. 25 years and it hadn't been. It's the last one of the four things. To, anti to, to intercept through traffic and route it, give them a more convenient way around downtown. And, and he said, uh, I th so it's about time, don't you think, we did some, 25 years. We've got plans pretty well uh, uh, in order. And uh, we're, uh, uh, we're, we're about ready to advertise for, for bids. And I said, he said, now you remember, the city of Dallas is supposed to buy the right of way. And I said, we've got it. It's ready for you. And he said, uh, you, and you're supposed to put in the storm drainage system. And I said, our plans are complete. We're ready to go. And so he said, he said, all right, we'll proceed. And he, he took off and advertised for bids for the construction of the so service roads because his scheme was uh, very logical. They built, get built the quick, build them, put traffic on them immediately. So you have Woodall Rogers traffic between Central and, and Stemmons. And uh, then we build the through lanes. And it was an elevated structure uh, from, from central to, uh, to Stemmons. I, I never had a fond f feeling about elevated structures, personally. I, I would avoid them all at all costs. But I thought, what do I do? Get in the way of 25 years of, of, uh, uh, of, of work and never started? Uh, I, it's not anything that I ought to do. So they went ahead, we awarded the contract, started working on this uh, drainage, and they started building the service road. And Vince Potty was doing a downtown plan for us. 
And he said, you know, you ought not let that happen. And I said, well, I know, but it's too late. The horse is out of the barn. And, uh, and every time he came by, he'd say, don't let that happen. And finally he said, you mustn't let that happen. I thought, I've wanted an ally in this all my time here. I'm going to stop it right there. So I called the director of public works and said, Turn, suspend the construction contract on the storm drains. Don't proceed another dollar. And I called the health, call, called the highway department, and you can imagine their reaction. You stop, build, stop, stop your construction because we're withdrawing our approval uh, of the elevated structure. Now the council knew what I was doing, but but they, I didn't take that to the council and get approval of it. And I later got scalded by an investigative reporter. But <clears throat> I just did it, and they, that's what they wanted to do. Uh, to the highway department's uh, great credit, they, without a murmur, although they, just, they, they were angry at the decision, they did some advanced engineering so that they had to fix the retainer walls. The, you know, so you, you take the building down, you have to have retainer walls, and then you run. So they were able to salvage their work and let that contract go on on the, on the, on the, on the side roads. And, and they developed some, some, some cable ties that, that worked to, to hold that, those, those retaining walls in place. And they went ahead, and now you have Woodall Rogers Freeway. Now, when I went to see Luther Deberry, he said, now, uh, you know, we need to do something about, <laughs> we need to do something about Central Expressway, too. And I said, look, Luther, one thing at a t time, I got to <laughs> swallow it a little bit at a time. But in terms of Central, you were also instrumental in keeping them from elevating parts yeah, of that. Which, and, yeah, and that wasn't a pretty thing either. <laughs> uh, <laughs> They went ahead and developed the plans for Central Expressway. Widening. And I was told yeah. early that it, it was widened and we wanted to widen Central Expressway. And, and I, I was told that uh, by the Public Works Department that looked at the plan and said it's an elevated structure. Go down mile, mile, <laughs> two, three, four miles of structure. Now all you have to do is look at what the highway department did with an elevated structure through Austin. <laughs> Just think that uh, it, uh, we, Woodall Rogers would have been a barrier. It would have been traffic noise. It would increase the traffic noise. All those things that you don't. You know, and we, we, we did Woodall Rogers what we did because we wanted to, to pri provide downtown energy for the development of what's now known as Uptown. Uh, and that's interesting. It turns out that Uptown is now furnishing the energy for downtown. <laughs> but I, I said, well, tell the highway department we, we, we won't accept uh, the elevated structure. And th so it was a, it had been enough idle conversation that the council scheduled a special meeting in the afternoon uh, in the council chamber, and it was packed, and the highway department was there to present it plans. The council wasn't unanimous in that. They were uh, by a long shot. And uh, 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 we... I, as we walked in the council chamber and I saw that, I asked the director of public works, I said, you have told the state that we're going to recommend against it, aren't you? And he said, no. <laughs> so they walked in there to, for their presentation with, a, without any, with no knowledge that they were making a proposal that I was going to recommend uh, uh, for uh, that it be rejected. We spent all afternoon there. Bob Folsom was the, was the mayor and uh, I... I made my recommendation. It was a two-page, very carefully written, uh, 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 and said uh, we should reject these plans and ask them to do something at the surface. And the council approved it probably unanimously. I don't know. But now you have, along came Walt Human. He helped pick up and get it, all the nuts and bolts done to get it through there. Uh, but now you have Central Expressway. It is. Yeah. Um, now, back to what I'll Rogers for a moment. Did you tell me that there actually was some early consideration of a deck park that, for financial reasons, didn't get built? What's that? For a deck park. For a de oh. in the early years, even. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, 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 we, when we submitted the, the we, we, we had to submit our plan to the council for approval. We didn't ask to, to, to do it. We, didn't, we needed to 
submit the plans for uh, engineering to the council to to the council and get their approval on the on the we had to buy some more right away get approval by right away and so on and when we a part of it said you know what this will do is stitch the, what what's now uptown and downtown together and there's no reason why we couldn't we couldn't put a park there and so we talked to Ponty and Travers and they put it in their first plan uh, it, it, it was uh, uh, really just a deck with with a uh, lawn on it, a solid. And every year we had a, every time we had a bond issue, uh, we tried like a mischief to, to, to build, to put a park in there. Put a, and when we looked at it, we were looking at 15, 20 million dollars and all the other demands on city's money. And we, I decided we just can't do that. Well, that lemon of disappointment that we didn't get to do that turned into lemonade because that's a $250 million project down there now, uh, Warren Park, and, and it's a far better than we could have done with the city's money by itself. That's great, thank you. Um, one other thing that I thought people might be interested in learning is that when they were planning uh, City Hall, you actually arranged that there would be uh, like a dart route under City Hall that nobody knows is there probably, but it's well, it it was lost to Dart even. Uh, oh. I was doing I was I was doing work with Dart uh, on and and raised it to their attention. But uh, we, the city hall, quick and dirty, was. But there were three versions of the city hall, three models. Uh, while Eric Johnson was there, we he he, he his argument for a new city hall was uh, it it would be a combined municipal building where all of the city employees would be in. The, in the building. Uh, police would be there, fire would be there, the jail would be there and all. And, and he was also wanting to build DFW Airport and had it underway. And so our, the City Hall was, was concrete and so were all the dry, runways and aprons out at the airport. We, ex we, had, we were making demands for, for concrete uh, <laughs> that exceeded the capacity. So we, we took bids and it was twice the budget. And we redid it and took the jail out, and, and we rebid it again, and it was still twice the budget. And so I asked uh, 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 Mr. McDonald, I'd like to build the city hall. Would you give me permission and get everybody, all the other act actors out of it? And he said he would. We there were three stories planned under the under the city, and and the park was added, and that's a story by itself, but. Another miracle that the hall was built, city hall was built. But the third, we'd already done some uh, thinking about it, and and I told them to to leave the third level uh, a, a cavity there at the edge of the city, so that if the city ever came along, so that if if there ever became a a, a plan for a subway, uh, that there was that would provide a cavity right through there. Uh, to the east from an east-west side town and it's there it's been there nobody knows about it uh, <laughs> none of the city employees I think knew about it, and, and about it even though we had uh, we we bought some uh, future plans for the expansion of the city hall never knew about it and I mentioned it to Dart they went down and looked at it it's not a very pretty mess down there but but it's still a cavity that we were ahead of our time that's great thank you well, it's almost 12.30. We might have time for one or two questions, uh, if anybody has something they'd like to ask. I see somebody, Peter, in the very back. Do you think in today's environment, the city would be, do you think in today's environment, the city would be able to do something like you did with Raymond and uh, Reunion uh, area? Could you hear him? I didn't hear it. Well, he's asking, do you think in today's environment, political environment, the city could do a public-private partnership like they did with Ray Hunt? Uh, I, uh, I, it, would be a, it would be a real challenge. But, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, since I was a little bitty boy on the farm, I, I reached for responsibility. I wanted to milk the cows and fill, slop the hogs, and I reached for opportunity. And I do that today. I have for my whole life. If I see an opportunity, I can't resist trying it. I want to be a pace setter. I want to, I'm willing to take on the challenge, 
and I'm willing to pay the price and almost had to two or three times. But uh, it would be difficult to, uh, uh, now because it's bureaucratized. You, you have to go through a, a whole bunch of steps. But if uh, I wouldn't say no if, uh, uh, it, 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 if, if it cropped up now. Right. That might be a, a good note to end on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Schrader, for a fascinating conversation.